Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lisa Palrine, Director of Enrollment Management. Thanks for joining us for our next uh, webinar series. Um, this is number three. I think, yeah, number three. Uh, so thanks for those who have joined us for our previous two, um, academics at CHCH, and we also had a student panel a couple days ago, which um, the kids did such an amazing job. So thanks for, to those who have joined us in the past and, and who are here this afternoon. Today we're gonna be talking about our skills and academic support program. And we have a great group of panelists lined up again today, um, hopefully to answer all of the questions that you have. Um, again, all these, all these webinars are recorded, so I just wanted to make note of that. And we'll also be posting them on our website where you registered for this Zoom meeting. And we'll also be sending a follow-up email as well. Okay, so before we get started, I just wanted to quickly share my screen with everybody and go over today's schedule for the day. All right, can everyone see my screen? Yes, okay, great. So I'm just gonna walk us through the agenda for the next hour or so. Um, next up, we're gonna be showing a skills and academic support video. I did wanna make note that this, while this video is a little bit dated um, back a few years ago, the content in the video is still very much uh, relevant, okay? So while we don't have brand new footage to show you, we're hoping that this overview video can give you a, a, a good sense of our skills and academic support program. And then we're going to go through introductions of our panelists for this afternoon. And then Ms. Henry is going to walk us through a sample lesson plan. And then I'm going to open it up to questions and answers. Okay, so that's the schedule for this afternoon. And again, in that chat box on the bottom bar of your screen, is where I'm going to be keeping track of all the questions. And so I'll be organizing those. If there's a quick answer to one of them, my team, my awesome admissions team is also joining us this afternoon. Um, so they might be able to give you a quick, quick answer, but I'll be organizing all the questions and trying to get to everybody. If for some reason we fall short on time and there are still questions that you have for us, um, it's not a problem. You can feel free to reach out to me and I'll make sure that I get you in contact with the appropriate um, faculty or staff member at CHCH to make sure we get all those questions answered for you, okay? So with that, I'm gonna start off with our video. So Matt, over to you to, to launch the video. Thanks everyone for joining. Skills and academic support is a place where students work in small groups with the teacher to develop an understanding of who they are as learners and develop the skills they need to be independent learners. RSAS classes meet three times a week like our other academic classes. They're credited classes. Uh, the the student-to-teacher ratio in our in RSAS classes is always four to one. The focus of each class may be different depending upon what each student needs that particular day or that particular week. One, so you go down five and then to the right one. Let's see. Within that 75 minutes, it's about 25 to 30 minutes of whole group instruction focusing on a skill um, for that week. And then the rest of the time is typically meant for individualized work where the teacher is, a, is able to go around to each individual student and check in. She's just learned like my academic working style, how I like to study, how I like to do my homework, how I'm very organized with everything. And I think she really pays attention to all the little things so she can help me in the way that I need help. But tell me more about the Silk Road. That's, you're gonna put that in your outline. If he needs the opportunity to think about how to collect data, or how to put together um, an essay or how to brainstorm. He can use the time for skill building or for a topic related um, assignment. Our main focus in SAS classes is to develop organizational skills, time management skills, self-advocacy skills, specific skills around different academic tasks like writing tasks, test preparation, and all these skills are really what students need in order to be uh, successful independent learners in a college environment. Great, thank you. Um, as you saw from the video, we are using Zoom technology and I think mostly everybody in the world is using Zoom right now. So sometimes it does freeze up a little bit, but again, you know, we're going with, with what happens and, you know, um, you know, this is obviously 
a different time right now, so we're doing the best best we can, and we're all you know at home. We sometimes might have a little one screaming in the background, or an animal, or you know barking or something. So we're just going to be as laid back as we can and just um, have fun with the next hour or so through this webinar. Um, I also just want to make note that skills and academic support, we often refer to it as SAS. So when we start rolling with introductions and the panelists and answering questions for short, um, it's fine if you use SAS. So everyone knows that that's what that stands for. Okay, we're going to lead into introductions next and I'm going to ask Miss um, Miss Henry to start off. Hi everybody, my name is Maura Henry. This is my fifth year at CHCH and my 15th year as a teacher. I used to teach in New York City public schools before I taught here uh, at the high school level teaching, doing academic support mostly for English language learners and students with learning differences. And I grew up around here. I went to Belmont High and I did theater and sports there. And I do theater here at CHCH as well on the technical side of things. I work backstage and uh, build the sets and uh, organize things. I would say make the costumes, but let's be real, I don't do that. <laughs> I just ask <laughs> students to do it. They're much better than me with the sewing machine. Um, <laughs> but uh, I came here after uh, I, we had decided to move back to the area and my friend said, come see my school. And I said, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm a public school teacher. It's what I do. I went to public school. I teach a public school now. She said, just come, just come see. And I came to CHCH and was blown away by the campus because it was just so beautiful. And then I was stunned uh, because of the diversity that I saw, the racial diversity of the student body. I'll just be really blatant about it. And um, I thought that I would never find any I mean, racial diversity at a private school period. And I definitely didn't think it would be the way that it is here, which is um, one of the reasons why I stay. And one of the reasons why I came and one of the reasons why I stay. Mm -hmm. um, just the general diversity, racial, but also neurodiversity and diversity of thought and idea and experience. Great. Thank you, Mark. Good. All right. And now I'm gonna introduce our students um, who are on the panel to help us out this afternoon. So I'm gonna start with Sonia. Um, my name's Sonia. I'm a junior from Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Um, I've been at Chapel Hill since ninth grade, and I came from the Willow Hill School in Sudbury. Um, I'm a boarding student as well. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, I am one of the cavalry leaders, so I'm one of the head tour guides. Um, I play varsity volleyball and lacrosse, and I intern um, with the athletic trainer in the winter. Great. Thank you, Sonia. All right, next up is Max. All right, so hi guys. Um, my name is Max Carvajal. I am a junior at, at Chapel Hill. I am a day student. I've been coming here since my freshman year. Um, so after school activities I do, I do theater, um, theater tech, and I also manage the girls varsity volleyball team. And I'm, I'm from Ashland, Massachusetts. And yeah. Great, thank you. Is everything okay in the kitchen? Before yeah. we got on, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. fire. <laughs> <laughs> Like I smell fire, my sister's cooking, so <laughs> everything okay? Yeah, it's all good, don't worry. All right, perfect, good. <laughs> all right, thanks, Max. All right, Devin, you're up next. Okay, my name is Devin West. Um, I'm a boarder, but I actually live in Massachusetts, situate, it's on the coast, right in between Boston and Plymouth. Um, I am a sophomore, but I came in, two months late into sophomore year and I originally came from a Montessori school and then my first high school was a Catholic all-girls school and that didn't fit for me so I came here and I've been loving it ever since. Great and what do you participate in? <laughs> oh yeah um, I am a lover of theater so I'm a very theatrical person and the theater program is perfect for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, thank you so much. All right, Ian, you're up next. Hi, my name is Ian. Um, I'm a current, I'm a current sophomore. Um, I've been here since, at Chubba Hill since my freshman year. Um, I came from Metro West USA School. It's a, it's in Framingham. And then um, I'm in Cowboy and I play soccer, basketball, and tennis. Great. Awesome. Thanks, Ian. All right. So I'm going to turn it over um, 
Tamora, who um, prepared some a little presentation for us, just to kind of give us an overview again of what skills and academic support is. Um, I know there was a lot highlighted in the video, but she's going to actually get a little bit more in depth with um, the details of, of our SAS program. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Moore, who's going to um, share her screen with us. Thanks so much, Lisa. All right, everybody. So I made a, just a brief presentation that will have some of the same information that was in the video, but much like we do in SAS, sometimes you present the same information in a different way and it reaches different people. So uh, what is SAS? So as Lisa noted, it's skills and academic support. And let's see if it'll advance for me. There we go. So SAS at CHCH, that's a lot of letters, is a regular credit bearing class. It meets three times a week and you can take it all four years and still meet all of our graduation requirements. It's a time to practice skills and strategies like academic skills, executive function skills, independent learning skills. And it's a time to work on assignments for other classes while you have the support of your SAS teacher or while you can work with your other classmates. The lesson topic, so uh, we might talk about note taking. We do actually do a lengthy time on note taking in ninth grade. And, or we might, let's say, organize your materials, or we might talk about uh, what it means to manage your anxiety as exams approach. And those would be sort of the lesson topics. And the format of the class is that we start with that lesson. We're focusing on something relevant to your experience or something relevant to an assignment that you have. And then we go into the work period, which is uh, 50 to 55 minutes, and students work on their own work with help from me uh, right there in the class. And so I brought an example project. I hope that I'm not giving terrible flashbacks to Devin and Ian, uh, who just recently completed the recipe makeover project for Biochem 1. I guess I'll, I'll read this out even though everyone can read it. Some people are audio learners. But. In this project, you'll have the opportunity to take the recipe of a food that you like and change it to make the recipe healthier. We've discussed how the number of and different types of macromolecules, proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates, and food groups, fruits, veggies, dairy, grains, protein, may make a food more or less healthy. You'll use this information to think about how to change at least three parts of your original recipe. To share your ideas, you should have a physical product that you can hand in. This could be a poster, a video, a paper, a Prezi, or like a Google slide presentation, or a comic strip. And furthermore, students were told to be sure to make and explain three changes to the recipe, considering the food groups, uh, if they add or subtract food groups when they make the recipe healthier, the types of macromolecules that the recipe contains, the effect that the changes will have on the taste, and whether you would accommodate any dietary restrictions. Plus, there needs to be a re reflection and a presentation, which all might make you say, what? <laughs> um, which is sometimes a reaction that, that we have when we get a large project assignment like this. So I wanna show you what we did in SAS. And the strategy that we used, we call envisioning the final product. So here's what we did. It's what we would do, but it's actually also what we did. Uh, <laughs> first, we start at the end and we say, what do I want my final product to look like? So I know it's gonna be a poster, and I know that it's gonna have my recipes on it, and I should probably have some visual images to make it sort of you know, visually interesting, maybe a picture of the final product. Okay, what are the requirements? Oh, right, I have to have my three changes on there as well. What might I be forgetting? That'd be a good opportunity to turn to a neighbor and say, okay, this is what I think I need on my final product, what do you think? Then we move backwards from there. So if that's my final product, what do I have to, what steps do I have to take, sorry, uh, to make the final product? So what are the steps I need to go through? And then where or uh, when might I need some help? So I know myself, I'm gonna need some help here uh, when it comes to doing the reflection. And then we step backward again. So if those are my steps, what supplies do I need to complete these steps? And how am I going to get those supplies? So I'm going to show you what we did in class. This is actually from Ian and Devin's recipe project class. So 
we said our final product would include the reflection, which would be typed one page or less, the visual presentation, which in this case, the person we were, I think it was Jason, who's the third member of their class, was doing a poster. So he wanted to have the old recipe, the new recipe, his three changes, his two nutrition labels. And the final product included the presentation to the class. So the steps were, now we look in the center section here, uh, choose the recipe, of course, <laughs> research the ingredients, and uh, we linked in Calorie King because that's how um, Mrs. Cook, the teacher in this class, was suggesting to, to research said ingredients. Then change the ingredients, then write about why you change them, create your nutrition labels, make your poster, and then prepare to speak. Excuse me for a moment. You'll notice below this, we put in a couple little notes here about helpers, if you will. So Mrs. Cook had an online label making helper. So we linked that. And we also noted that Jason was gonna to wanna to practice his presentation with me in SAS because he wasn't super comfortable speaking in front of his chemistry biochem class yet. So we were gonna to practice together. And then we moved backwards from there knowing his supplies were not huge that he needed. He needed a device with internet. He needed poster board markers and pencils. Jason is a boarder, so thinking about that ahead of time was really important because we needed to acquire the poster board from the school store, which isn't open at 7 p.m. the night before the project is due. So we needed to think ahead. And then the turning it in uh, was to bring it to class and present, and then to put your reflection in your Google folder. So I have a couple of examples. This was the nutrition label maker that Mrs. Cook shared with everybody that helped them make their labels. And here's a person who opted to do the project as a Google Slides presentation. And they did the original recipe and the new recipe and the calorie breakdown for the new one. And these were their changes. They changed whole grain flour for regular flour. Instead of eggs, they used applesauce. Sounds crazy, really, really uh, a possibility. And this student actually had an egg allergy, so she wanted to uh, accommodate for that. Because the applesauce added liquid, she was able to remove the milk, and it also has some sugar, so she could reduce the amount of sugar she added. She made her labels, and there was her reflection. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. <laughs> Sorry about that. So um, that's sort of something that we would do in SIS. I mean, we'd get together. It wouldn't be as formal and sort of dry as that just was. It would probably involve a lot of the students saying, no, wait, 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 wait. I have such a good idea. Wait, I'm going to do this. Cauliflower crust, you know, like on my pizza. Um, but that's generally what we would do. And then we would have a 50-minute work period in which to actually make that project right now. Great. Good. Thank you. Awesome example. That seems like such a fun project. I think it sounds like that, but maybe when you're in it, you're feeling like, oh. I feel like overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Good. Um, just had a couple, couple questions come in and, and if you want to start um, to the audience, if you want to start submitting your questions in the chat, um, that'd be great. But we have a few in the meantime that we can start, start tackling. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, one parent asked about, the different SAS levels. So, you know, skills and academic support is an additional fee. It's something that the admissions committee will recommend at the time of admission. So if we feel like a student is admissible, but would need this academic support class, then that would be part of your, your contract when you're accepted. And do you want to just talk about the essay levels um, a little bit more and how maybe, you know, students will, could drop down and how that yeah. works? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, so in general, we would say a lot of students start at, at three times a week. It, it seems um, good to begin there. And then a student might stay at three times a week all four years, and that's totally great. They would be learning their, you know, skills, practicing their self-advocacy. It doesn't look the same in the upper levels always. It, it can feel more like a college learning center, which is great pr preparation. But if a student is starting to really master this independent learning, executive functioning, they've got great academic skills, we might recommend to them or they might ask, do you think I could go down to two days a week? And, or if they're thinking of us, let's say as a sophomore, I'm gonna transition out of SAS next year. So in the spring trimester, I might say, okay, so let's go down to two days a week. Let's try one day a week. And 
uh, they would in that way ease their way out, but still have the support that's right there just in case they stumble a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if they do drop down to two days a week or one day a week, then that those other, so say they drop from three to one day a week, now they have two open spaces in their schedule. Um, that wouldn't be filled with anything else, but that's an opportunity for them, again, to use that time wisely, maybe go to the, you know, a quiet space and start working on something or, is that accurate, Nora? Mm -hmm. Perfect, exactly right, Lisa, thanks. Yep. And then can you, if you're in skills and economic support, can you still take a world language? Absolutely. Yeah, students uh, can take, so we require two years of a world language and students take that and take SAS at the same time. Sometimes we practice together in SAS, Sonia, you know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, great, good, good. Um, and another question had to do with kind of the communication um, between advisors, teachers, the SAS program. How do you all work together to support each individual student? Yeah, this is, I think that initially, if you're a student trying to, um, you know, hide a little bit or, or you're like, oh man, I didn't do that thing. There, unfortunately, there is no secret here. I will know if you didn't do your world civ assignment. Um, I always say that I won't be mad because it's true, I won't. If you didn't, it's either because you can't, because you didn't understand or because like you can't get motivated or any of those things. It'll never be you versus me fighting about the work. It'll be you and me versus everything else. And I tell kids that all the time. I can see maybe a couple of eyes rolling over here. But um, so I would hear from the world civ teacher, oh, I didn't, you know, I didn't get this uh, reflection that so-and-so was supposed to write after chapter five. And I'll say, oh, okay. And then it'll show up, let's say maybe in the progress note. So the advisor now knows about it too. And they'll reach out and say, oh, did you see that? And I say, yeah, we're working on that in, in SAS. We'll have it done. And then we send an email to the teachers and say, done so. There's a lot of communication. Even let's say that I started an essay preparation. So the, the students were writing an essay about the fall of Rome in uh, the ninth grade at the end of the winter trimester. And we were writing thesis statements. And I was working with a student and he had started to want to change his a little bit. And I said, oh, hang on one second. Let's make sure that we can, he wanted to enhance his. He wanted to add the similarities between uh, what he was talking about in the fall of the Roman Empire with the French Revolution. And so we just sent a quick message to his history teacher. She approved it and we were able to continue and then she could adjust in class after that. Okay, great. Good. I'm just going to um, have Matt share the screen really quick because I want to show our weekly schedule and because we had a question if SAS occurs after school or how does that occur. Um, so I just wanted to walk us through our daily schedule for those that may not have been able to tune in um, to our other webinars. <clears throat> so all of our classes um, all end up meeting three days a week for 75 minutes, including the skills and academic support class. So if um, a block, for example, was, um, you know, someone's Algebra 2 class that meets on Monday, Tuesdays, and not again until Thursday. And now if B block, Matt, if you can just highlight the cursor on, on B block. B block could be someone's skills and academic support class. So that also meets three times a week for 75 minutes. So it occurs on Mondays, Tuesdays, and then again on Thursdays. And what's nice is that students don't have homework in every subject every night. So this does you know, make homework load much more balanced and manageable, but it also forces them to really organize what their week looks like. And so, more, do you maybe want to talk about kind of how every, how our online system works and how we have, you know, homework sure. assignments done and maybe the weekly progress reports as well? Thank you, Matt, for sharing the screen. Yeah, we have an online um, learning platform called Mitch, my CHCH, and the students can find all of their assignments there. I can see their assignments, their parents can see their assignments. We can all look together um, at uh, what's coming up for the week. So often on a Monday SAS class, we'll look at the week and say, oh, it looks like there's a lot due Thursday. Let's start front loading that now so that Wednesday night doesn't become a nightmare. And then students turn their work in on Mitch as well. They see their schedule on there, they see their assignments, they turn in their work there. And then weekly, we, uh, teachers write a progress note for every student they have. The progress note isn't just, here's what we did in class this week, but it's very specific. You know, it might say, Ian, great job in SAS this week. You completed your history paper revisions and um, that new lab for biochem. 
Um, and then usually we'll have some kind of a tip or a uh, request, like in the coming week, I know we, we're gonna wanna get ready for the math exam, so let's plan to do practice problems together. That progress note will be available to students on Tuesdays and to parents on Wednesdays. And I love that as an mm -hmm. SAS teacher, because by Tuesday, I see the student, I say to them, all right, this is what's coming out in progress notes. What are we doing about it? That way, when the parents use it Wednesday, students can say, oh, yeah, I took care of that already. Got a whole plan, going to office hours on Thursday, no problem. Mm -hmm. It's nice. It's nice. Good. Takes a little pressure off of everybody. Yep. Good. Uh, what percentage of new students are enrolled in SAS? Let's see. 80% of, of uh, freshmen. and then. New students at the sophomore, junior, and senior levels, all of them, 100% yep. of them go into SAS. Okay, great, thank you. Um, from the students, I know, um, <clears throat> from your perspective, what, what would you say is one or, or some most valuable skill that you've acquired during your time of taking SAS? Uh, Anyone can go, yeah. Can I take this one? Yes, yeah, Sonia, you can start. Yeah, so, um, a little backstory. So, SAS was my first class ever at Chapel Hill with Miss Henry and Max and Max. Um, and I think I, I really came into Chapel Hill not being confident at all in my academic abilities because um, I never really succeeded in any school I was in. You know, I, my executive function is really, you know, it wasn't there. Um, mm -hmm. Now it's very much there. So I think a lot of the note taking, as, as well as the organization, as a person, not organized at all. Mm -hmm. So um, I also think that the um, executive function w is what was really like holding me back in my previous schools and my previous school settings. So I think when, at least for me, when a teacher sat down with me, and I mean, I still sit down with Miss Henry at least once a week, we, you know, make sure everything's done. Um, but just to make sure that I'm organized and I'm still on track. Um, mm -hmm. So I think one, the sense of like, you know, like there is someone looking after me when I'm doing this, mm -hmm. especially as a ninth grader really, really helped me. Mm -hmm. And even now it still helps. So I think that and the executive function, 100%. Great. Thanks, Sonia. Devin, did you want to add to that? Oh, you're on mute. Okay. Thank you. I totally <laughs> forgot about that. That's okay. We're all getting used to it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I personally have different like I not only have bad executive function I have other underlying disabilities that mm -hmm. really make me struggle in school mm -hmm. so I really appreciate how much Miss Henry really helps me with that like we talk it over and we talk over like what has been like setting me back and also how to push through it mm -hmm. and also let's see we can also relate to each other which mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. um and then it also really helps hold on it's on the tip of my tongue um uh, <laughs> it really helps when they break things down mm -hmm. when it's broken down for me it doesn't seem as intimidating Mm -hmm. Usually when I look at a project, I'm like, I will never get that done. Like, that's a research paper. Mm -hmm. it's not happening. But when we break it down into the little individual steps, that really helps. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate that. Good. Good. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ian, oh, are you raising your oh, hand? <laughs> I, was, I'm, I was unmuting myself, but yes, that too. Um, <laughs> I guess what I would say is I agree with Devin and uh, Sonia on that with like executive function, um, very nice small posts. It's all, that's one reason I love SAS, but then for all the same reasons, but then I cannot tell you how many times this, I've gone to Miss Henry and said, Miss Henry, can you help me? I'm not in class because mm -hmm. the SAS teachers, the SAS teachers own the help, own only the help you. Mm -hmm. And one, the SAS, I'll say it this way, I guess. The SAS teachers, they, I've lost my chance of I'm sorry. Okay. Are you trying to say, Ian, like how sometimes you'll be like, I know I don't have class right now, but 
can we work on this thing and we'll do it yes yeah yeah, <laughs> way, good. yeah. good great and max do you want to add anything i mean oh, Devin, i'll get to you next I mean, like, they all kind of stole, like, my words, but, like, yeah, that's okay. definitely, like, <laughs> SAS, <laughs> so SAS is definitely, like, one of my favorite classes because, like, I always feel like I can go in and get work done and I'm not afraid to ask for help because I feel like a skill that, a skill that I'm still, like, trying to, to, like, work on and, like, you know, develop is the ability to ask for help because I feel like sometimes if I ask a stupid question, like, I don't know, I don't want to, like, get made fun of for it, but mm -hmm. I feel like during SIS, like, I've, like, learned to, like, overcome that, and also in SIS, like, when I'm, like, not doing work, I can just, like, chat with a teacher about, with, like, how I'm doing and everything, like, emotionally, mm -hmm. and um, I feel like it's, like, a good time to take a, yeah, take a break because, like, um, as a junior, like, all my classes are, like, kind of crazy, so, like, it's kind of a good time to, like, What's your out. schedule this year? What are you taking for classes? Um, I'm taking Honor Spanish 3, I'm taking U.S. History, English 11, Biochem 2, mm -hmm. and, um, oh, and Algebra 2. Algebra 2, okay. Oh, that Algebra 2. Yeah. How did you forget about math? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> intense schedule, yeah. yeah. And you came from public school, correct? Yes, I did come from a public school, and my you public school, yeah. wait, wait, were you going to finish? You can go. <laughs> so my public school had like six classes every day and like mm -hmm. at Chapel Hill we only have like four classes and three classes like every other day mm -hmm. so like um it's kind of nice to get like a little like break between classes because like at public school I didn't have any break to be at any break at a class when I had like a minute so like it's kind of nice to get like a little break and like not to have like six classes every day like at a public high school it's like that too we have six classes every day and then like yeah. I'll have like a lot of homework so. And I don't mean to put you on the spot, but did you have tutoring before you came to CHCH? Like, did you have to get outside support at all? Um, yeah, I, I did have outside tutoring at Chapel uh, before I came to Chapel Hill. But and do you feel and like, honestly, and do you feel like the system works better? For, like, do you see like a difference between a tutor versus what SAS provides you when it's um, day? Yeah, but like, I feel like S, like thing about SAS is that the teacher, the SAS teacher knows like about like the subject and like the project a little bit more than like my tutor would because I kind of have to explain it more. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's, they're both, they're both are very similar. Like I have a tutor for like my SAT and also I have like a tutor that helps me with like my reading comprehension and like my writing mm -hmm. that I still use today. I've been using mm -hmm. since like my freshman year, maybe before mm -hmm. that. So, um, and she and I were in close contact when Max was in SAS. Yes. Um, we would talk Honest. about, Honest. yeah, Honest. yeah, def Honest. definitely. But then like other that communication happens, which is great. So. Mm -hmm. Devin, did you have something else to add? Oh, just unmute yourself. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, you're not I the only one. This happens as all the time. Don't worry about <laughs> yeah. it. Um, so, just like Max, I had many classes a day, and we actually had eight classes, and sometimes they would even forget to tell us what the homework is, and then not even put it on the website. So the next day, we'd walk in, and we'd be like, okay, mm -hmm. you're telling us to take out the homework. When were you going to actually tell us about this? Mm -hmm. So what I really like about SAS is that we go over everything. And not only that, all the teachers make sure it's on there. And if it's not, we talk to our SAS teachers. They make sure they send them an email. Like, it all gets taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, also, Max touched on this a little bit. But also at my old school, asking for help was one of the hardest things to do because mm -hmm. at the school there was so much pressure on everybody who was competitive. So asking a question was really hard. Mm -hmm. But with SAS teachers, you can really ask even like personal things. Like, I don't know what to do like in my life right now. Like I'm in a weird place. Mm -hmm. And then different academic questions about different classes. Like they're there to answer those questions, which I really like. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you for adding that. Good. And then um, how does um, sort of students are um, not getting their work done or, you know, they're just struggling more. What would you say? Like, how do how do you hold students accountable? Um, you know, how is that different from public school where students are just, um, you know, teachers are looking at a student just saying, nope, they're not turning things in. They're just kind of getting bad grades versus here. How, what would you say the differences with that? And then how would you hold students accountable to make sure that they're getting the work done? I, I really believe that that a student 
who can perform well will. And so if they're not performing well, it's not because they won't, it's because they can't. And so we have to remove the barrier, whatever the, the things are that are in the way of getting that work done and turning it in on time. And that might be, you know, we try to really get to the root of the problem. Is it that they do the work and then don't turn it in accurately, like it's in the wrong Google folder. I maybe see some nodding up there because it's, mm -hmm. that happens a lot. Or is it that they do the work and they're so anxious about the results of the work that they don't turn it in? Mm -hmm. Or is it that they cannot manage their time and they come to the end of the day and can't imagine how did I get here without having done my work? And then we would just make a plan together. So it might be, I know, you know, Devin is a big maker of the checklist. And so she'll work her way through her checklist. We'll make it together. She'll double check it against me. In the beginning, we really wrote it together. Now she really writes it and then we'll check it against each other. Did you get this? Yes, I did. And then we'll work our way through and just see, not, not punitive means, but what do you need to get your things done? So Sonia, as a junior, I might, she'll say, I'm falling behind in X, Y, Z. Can I come to your study hall on, Saturday, on Thursday night? So I do, I'm a dorm parent. And so I do study hall on Thursday nights. And so Sonia might just come in and we'll get back on track. Um, I might reach out to her current SAS teacher and say, hey, I worked on this with Sonia on Thursday night. Can you wrap this up on Monday with her? And um, I would say finding the root of the issue is important and then helping them stay on top of it. And that might be daily check-ins. That's easy. I mean, there's loads of people I check in with every day mm -hmm. <laughs> um, just to see, did you do this thing? Did you do that thing? And if not, why not? Can we get mm -hmm. to the root of it? I think that's really the, the our, our way of doing that. Mm -hmm. Also, can I add on, you know, like a student perspective, like being, yeah. you know, ninth grade, I, you know, with, fell under all of those. I was not confident. I couldn't ask for help. And now it's like the opposite. But um, mm -hmm. a lot of my work wasn't getting turned in. And, you know, at my old schools, it was like the teacher, the teacher would come and say, Sonia, like, why didn't you do this? You know, like it, it was more of a, like a, I don't want to say rude, but like not a, you know, a nice way of saying it. And like, I just think that the SAS teachers aren't like, okay, you know, if you don't do your work, you're going to get a detention. No, like it's all about how can we get that work done? Yes, it might, it might be late, but it's still in. So mm -hmm. at the I end of the day, you're still learning it, right? It's, yeah. it's always about the, um, I would say the approach of how a teacher comes up to you and does that. I mean, I think that, you know, those teachers are the best. You know, you can only learn so much, but it was really the approach. Mm -hmm. I think that really gets to the student. And I know that's what got to me because the yelling never works, you know, in my old school, <laughs> never works. But when someone sits down quietly and like, okay, Sonia, like, let's work on this. Okay, let's work on it, you know? Yep. Great. Thank you. Um, and then another question. Um, this was for Devin, and, and um, do you feel like you were um, behind or missed out anything major, missing ninth grade here, specifically SAS versus being on track and getting the support you need as coming in as a sophomore? Does that make sense? Well, I will say, in the sense of missing out, yes, I feel like I missed out because I wish I was here from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like, that would have changed my life. Like, I had a really rough year at my first school. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I feel like I missed out, but at the same time, I realized that they're here to support me now. Mm -hmm. So I'm you very feel like grateful the, for that part. Yep. And you feel like the structure of what you're getting in 10th grade SAS is still enough that you don't feel like you had. Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we do that. We often have, you know, because we do keep our ninth grade class smaller by design, we do add about 10 to 15 new sophomores every year and maybe six to 10 new juniors every year. But we understand that they haven't had the benefit of being at CHCH for ninth or 10th grade. Um, so our SAS teachers really do a great job of kind of really digging in with them specifically um, about what skill building that they really need to focus on and make sure that they're still um, building in, you know, that time as well. Um, and Maura, even though we're, we've gone distance learning at this point as a school, um, can you talk a little bit about how the SAS classes are still happening? And if they're, you know, obviously everything's different because we're not in person, but can you speak to that a little bit? Absolutely. It's been super interesting. We, we went back on Monday um, after teachers had a week last week to prep ourselves and for some of us learn some new technology, which has been really 
fun. Uh, I had my A block this morning, for example, which is a ninth grade class. And today we practice working in the breakout rooms. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the Zoom features is that you can get put into a small room with maybe one or two other classmates. So I just broke this class up into two and two um, to practice going in completing a task and then coming back and also asking for help within the break room. There's like a little hand that you can raise um, to ask the teacher to come in and help. And so that was our lesson today was actually just about the technology so that when mm -hmm. they go into their next classes and a little sign pops up and says, you've been invited to breakout room one, they don't say, no thanks, yeah. <laughs> um, which yeah. actually happened and, and prompted the lesson. So uh, one of my colleagues in, a, uh, in another class said to me, one of your ninth graders doesn't understand, um, and he's a, an English language learner. So he saw the word break and thought he could take a break. And she said, can you just talk it out with him? <laughs> and I said, sure. So we practiced together. It was great. And um, we did that for about 10 minutes. Our class, I would say 15, and our classes are a little bit shorter. And uh, now during in distance learning, they're 50 minutes. So mm -hmm. we did about 10 minutes in the breakout room and five minutes in the beginning was just to check in. How's everybody doing? Mm -hmm. And then we spent the balance of the class, the uh, 35 minutes, with them working on their own assignments. And they asked, two kids asked to be put into their own breakout room by themselves so mm -hmm. that they could raise their hand for help but not have to listen to me if I'm helping someone else. And uh, uh, two others decided to stay in the room with me because they didn't feel that they could stay accountable in the breakout room by themselves. Yep. So that's yeah. what it looks like now, yeah. Yeah, good. And do you, I know we've only been in, day three, right, of virtual learning, but from the student perspective, do you feel like, you know, not only with your SAS teachers, but also, you know, it's who we are as, as, um, as a community in school. Do you feel like you still have those connections and support? I know it's been a little bit of, bit of a whirlwind these past three weeks or so. Um, yeah, Max. Uh, yeah, I definitely still connect with like the teachers and like my friends as well. So like, we, I still like, you know, FaceTime them, I still text them and stuff like that. And, and also like, I'll say, for example, like Miss Dinkle, like she's an English teacher here and like one of my favorite teachers here um, because I actually met with her on Zoom yesterday and today today to just like kind of check in and like how like we're doing and everything and also like um, with helping me with like my my essay and like my um, paper or my, well, my paper and my book of choice. Um, so uh, she, she was so like during this like period of online like schedules like we have like office hour blocks so that's when I was able to go in and she was always like there and happy to chat and happy to help me with like my work so yeah good thank you anyone else want to talk to about that a little bit yeah so I would also say that like the office hours so we have office hours you know when we're in person on campus um which is super helpful but with the distance learning um there are the schedules a little bit different um but I would say, you know, I still email my teachers, you know, who I usually meet with during, you know, like Tuesday office hours or whatever. So I actually spoke with my math teacher yesterday during um, office hours, but that was more of a college recommendation thing. Um, but still, like, they are still available to talk. Um, and I would say even like, maybe even like, you know, after the office hours block and you can go into the breakout room during, um, during the regular class if need be. And I just think that like, you know, although you know, this, none of us really want to be sitting in our rooms at our desks, uh, staring at a computer screen. I think that the way it's set up with the schedule is very, very helpful. And I think like, you know, given circumstances, I'm doing pretty well. So. Mm -hmm. Great. And Devin, did you have something to say? Yo. Oh, don't forget to mute. <laughs> I'm going to do that every time, I think. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. It's your signature um, move, Devin. <laughs> I mean, thought about it before and then of course as the time comes it flies out the window um <laughs> as much as I like I absolutely love the support um that's coming from the distance learning and I'm actually really happy that with the amount that's happening but I will be honest nothing beats the real thing I know I know soon enough hopefully yeah, we'll do our part we'll be back yeah hopefully yeah good um one other question, um, do we do any SAT prep? So, oh. I know our director, yeah, our director of college counseling will be doing a live webinar on April 7th. Um, so make sure to join us for that. Uh, Mike, um, we'll, we'll share the link for that as well. But for anyone who's a junior right now going through that, are you doing it, yeah, Max outside? Or? So, 
me and Sonia, the sophomore year, we took a placement test to kind of see like if the SAT or the ACT would be better for us. So we did that, I think, sometime in April um, of last year. So I, um, I remember taking the test. It was like, we, I didn't have class a day. I took the test. And then after that, like the person, I think like the person who like monitored the test, like emailed me back saying that that was to be better for you. Mm-hmm. But I don't, but um, I actually do outside tutoring for my SAT um, that um, I've been doing it since like October and I'm just going to keep them like working up to taking it. I'm supposed to be taking it in May, but I don't think that's going to happen. Because yeah, it's, no, it's, no, it's, no, everything's, it'll give you more time to prep. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> that's basically the kind of mini SAT rundown for you. Okay, great. <laughs> Good. And then, um, so this is a question, it's more about the process for, for choosing classes and, and making sure requirements are met. So um, so later on in this spring, we'll send all new families um, some registration information, including, um, you know, kind of looking at our curriculum guide. Um, but every family who's entering ninth or 10th grade will meet with Kelly Walsh, who's our ninth and 10th grade program director, um, to actually look at your transcript and and kind of moving forward what what your classes would look like from the application we get lots of great information you know we ask for a math teacher recommendation english recommendation again we're looking at your your transcript um and then she'll work with you as a family to um choose choose your classes for your first year coming in moving forward after that um so students you usually you meet with your advisor in the spring correct um to then look at the year ahead and choose your classes. And obviously your parents have, have say in that, but to make sure all your cl- class requirements are met, graduation requirements for college as well. Um, Brooke Fink is our co- director of college counseling. And as all the students are kind of, you know, looking at schools that they want to apply to or thinking about majors they're interested in, you know, she's really the one that oversees all of that. So she's in direct communication with the grade level um, deans and program directors to make sure that all all of that is in line. Um, And then department chairs might be recommending, you know, a student to take, you know, maybe an honors or AP class or maybe doing um, one of our independent studies or certificate programs. Max, you're smiling a lot. What do you want to say? Any, any comments? You're on oh. mute. I'm on mute. <laughs> <laughs> My parents are on two meetings, so I'm kind of just kind of distracted. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, all right. Make sure nothing's wanna, on fire. <laughs> can I add something, Lisa? Yes, Maura, please do. Yes. I just wanted to add that one of the nice things that can happen in the, for example, I've got a, a sophomore right now who's in SAS with me, who's new to the school this year. It's not Devin. I would just say if it was Devin, it's a boy. <laughs> but he, um, so he is you know, doing really well and he'd like some more challenge next year. So we are getting him set up. So he chose the, some of the teachers give like a challenge prompt. They say, do you think you'd like to take honors U.S. history next year? Then you should do this challenge prompt. I know Ian did that um, for the latest history essay at the end of the winter trimester. And um, this student has been doing, um, is excited about maybe going to honors English 11. And so he's going to be sitting in on a class this spring to see, oh, okay, what's the level of discourse in here? Is this something that I could sustain as an 11th grader? And um, so we're all kind of mixed in there in the same way that you've got a lot of uh, people looking over, making sure that, you know, work is getting done and, and things are, are being, you know, understood in that same way. We're also there making sure that uh, you're getting the classes that suit you best and that you're interested in. Mm-hmm. And I imagine Sonia would like to put in a little plug for Miss Fink, perhaps. Oh, yes. Um, so I've been uh, working with Miss Fink since actually the summer going into this year. So I started really early because, you know, like I was kind of like, you know, I had some ideas in my head and Miss Fink has been, you know, was the, not her uh, live right now, but she's been incredibly helpful as in like, okay, Sonia, since you want to, so I'm interested in um, nursing, athletic training or physical therapy. So, you know, she's like, okay, so we want to focus towards, you know, science. So obviously I'm doing biochem two this year. That's a, um, the, I think the normal junior class. And then next year, um, obviously anatomy, and then maybe an independent study somewhere in there of medical terminology. So mm-hmm. I think, especially when you get up to junior and senior year, that's when, you know, there's more of a, a choice. Cause I know for me, like ninth grade, just all my graduation requirements, I wanted to get a language out of the way and everything. So I could do this. Um, also, I think that now having the, you know, the, the kind of the freedom of, you know, choosing a little bit more, obviously, like, I'm, you know, very interested in some of these things, and 
Miss Fink is always there to help. I've emailed her multiple times over spring break and everything. <laughs> so she's always available even to, you know, the students who want to start early as in, you know, like sophomore year. So I think that she's great and she's always willing to talk and give you her suggestions and everything. So. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Yeah. And I just want to make a point that, uh, oh, Max. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I want to add on to that. Um, so I actually started early too. Um, I actually started, I think, May or April of, of my sophomore year mm -hmm. to kind of meet with Miss Fink because I actually have a counselor outside of Chapel Hill that helps me with my college stuff. But I we kind of met, so we kind of did like a like kind of just talked about like what I like and like my interests because I'm not exactly sure what like what I want to major in just yet, which mm -hmm. is funny because I still have plenty of time. Mm -hmm. But like it's still just getting like an idea and stuff. And like Miss Fink is like super nice and funny and like helpful and like she's like always there to like whenever I have to go and ask her about like a college thing and mm -hmm. I'll, I already have like a good list of schools and I kind of have like I'm kind of getting an idea of what I want to go into mm -hmm. great so yeah also she's very realistic to add she's on to that. Yeah. you can joke around with her a little bit yes. but you know, you know. <laughs> she's very honest <laughs> to the point <laughs> good 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 yeah so hopefully you'll be able to join us um, on April 7th for that uh, and more you you spoke to this a little bit just kind of you know we talked about support a lot, but I also want to talk about kind of the challenge and that our students are super capable, but sometimes you need to unlock these super th certain things like Sonia said, like her executive function was just really the thing that was holding her behind in her other schools. Do you want to talk about that a little bit um, more or maybe any of the students feeling like, you know, you don't feel like just because you have SAS, you're not able to be challenged in those classes you excel in. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, it's a, it would be uh, just a, the wrong way of thinking to think of SAS as only as support, because what it is, is, is accessing the best of everything and, and helping you reach to the next level in, in all sorts of areas. So if that's, if your next level of organization means that like you have folders this year, that's great. But it might also uh, mean that you're now uh, gonna be organizing a school-wide event. Like I could support you doing that as well. I'm thinking too of how, I'm specifically thinking of uh, Sonia and I used to work on math um, every single SAS block. Mm -hmm. And we started to get into a routine and find our patterns. And so that was freshman year. Then sophomore year, we would meet as well. And we were continuing to find the ways that worked best. And now this year, we have been continuing to meet. But what's funny is that she often, no, no, I don't need any help with math. I got 100 on that test, but, um, which is fantastic. And I find that, you know, once you, the student can find the way that works for them, you know, and Ian and I have been doing that with biochem quizzes. And uh, last year's algebra quizzes, you might remember, Ian, we were really stepping through those together. And that's another option that tons of students take advantage of. Actually, I think almost every one of you has taken a quiz or test with me. Actually, I think maybe. Yeah, I, I've definitely taken a test with you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's one option to take your test, let's say, in SAS. But then we start to find the pattern so that you can then excel. And so um, I think uh, those opportunities are there, too. We have. Um, the chance to not just support you to get up to the level of the rest of the class, but actually to move beyond it. Mm -hmm. And I agree with that. I just want to add on to one thing. I feel like what really works at SAS is, you know, like freshman year, like a lot of, like for me at least, I just needed to know that I was supported, you know, in especially math, but just all my subjects in general with the executive function and other things. I need to know that I was supported and I need to make that relationship therefore so I could excel you know like for me it's I always need um you know someone like looking over me even if it's like you know virtual I'll just send it to someone um, but just knowing that I have you know so many SAS teachers behind me is so nice because you know if one of them's not available I'll just go to the other one and it's <laughs> it's so nice to know that like no matter what like even if you know I'm like you know I don't think I failed but I could do better like I still run it by them because I mean, why not? You know, they're there for us to use them. So I take full advantage of that all the time. And it's great. So. Sonia, thank you for saying that because I had one mom commenting on how amazing Miss Henry is. And she oh, is yes. very, very, very amazing. Um, but then she said, well, every SAS student have her, which unfortunately <laughs> not. But you just spoke to that a little bit, Sonia, that, you know, 
the whole SAS department is amazing. A lot of our, you know, I love all of them. They're all, you know, accessible. Yeah. So, um, yeah. but hopefully, hopefully, most of the new students will will have Miss yeah. or at some point, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I add to that? Yes, Ian. Because like, like even if you don't have an SAS, like let's say they have Miss Henry an SAS this year, I could still go to her if I have a question or something because my basketball coach this past year is out is an SAS teacher. Mm -hmm. So the whole department, whether you have a teacher with them or not, yep. if, if you can't find a teacher or you need to ask another teacher question, they're there for you as well. They're there for you, yeah. Great. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you. Well, we're just coming up on an hour. Um, and I think we've covered all of the questions. If for some reason we didn't get to your question or if you have a very specific question about your son or daughter um, that you really just wanted to spend more detail on and, and, and speaking to Miss Henry or somebody else. Um, she's been having lots of um, calls with accepted families and I appreciate you mm -hmm. doing that more, but she's no happy, happy to continue those. So mm -hmm. she's, um, she's willing and if, if you wanna reach out um, either directly to Maura or to me to, to arrange for that, we're happy to help and just wanna make sure that you all have the information you need as you're navigating this, this big decision process. So I just wanna give a round of applause to our awesome panelists and the students for Good taking time. the time out of their day to, to talk about their experiences here and um, you all did a great job. I know it's sometimes hard to, to do this on a, a Zoom webinar you're not used to, but you all did a great job. Technology was in our favor today. It all worked out. So, um, so make sure you tune in um, for parents. We're having a parent panel this Friday um, at 3.30. Students are obviously more, more than welcome to join in for that, but, um, but we will be having an amazing parent panel as well. And then next week, we'll be wrapping up with our final three webinars. Um, so we're gonna do arts, our performing and visual arts on Monday, followed by college counseling next Tuesday, and then wrapping up with athletics at CHCH. So uh, three, three or four more great, great um, webinars to join us for. So again, thank you all for joining us. Um, hopefully you can get outside for a little bit and uh, thanks again to everyone for, for being here. All thanks, right. Lisa. See you later. Thank Bye you. everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.